Welcome to Red Tastic. Story 1. I'm 35 female, a single mom with two children in high school. My late husband died when my children were 9 and 7, and I never remarried. We are quite stable financially as I work at a good job and have a good saving nest for my children and me. The problem is that my younger sister, 24 female, whom I had excitedly told about my finances and plans for the future, visited with her husband, then her fiancé, let's call him Jake, and made a request. Now at first, she blurted it out as a joke, telling me that she had gone to a window shop for cars with Jake, and they had seen this fine Audi they both loved. She went on and on about the Audi, talking about the fine points, the speed, engine, appearance, and everything. So I asked if they would be getting it, since they liked it so much. She offhandedly told me that I could get it for them as an engagement gift, since I had the money. We laughed over it and I didn't think much about this statement afterwards. It didn't take long for her to take it upon herself to constantly remind me to send the money for the car. She would send pictures, texts, sales ads, and anything concerning the car, and has been bugging me to wire her the fund for the car. I always responded that I do not have the funds to buy a car for her and I would do my best for her engagement party and wedding. I had enough and after she called me from the car dealership to quickly come down and pay because someone else had indicated interest in her dream car. I told her that I will not be buying a car for her as I never planned for it. She also reached out to my parents but they warned her against it, telling her to focus on what is important and not put herself in debts. We were all surprised to find out that my sister bought one against everyone's advice. Now she can't afford the payment. She called me the other night, sobbing, because she needed money. According to her, they have not been able to pay up the loan for the car. They made the down payment, but have been unable to continue payment, and one more missed payment would mean losing their car to repossession. They both had a lot of bills to pay for, so she wanted me to pay for the car. The amount she mentioned was something I could afford, but it will jeopardize my children's future. And while I felt bad for her situation, I had to let her know I couldn't help out. She got angry and called me a selfish miser who never offered help. My sister and her husband are both great people with good jobs, but they are always living above their means. And while I've helped in the past, I can't afford to pay for their car because that is what she wants. I told her to let go of the car since they can get another one once they're financially stable. But she screamed at me telling me I had the money. She mentioned my savings a few times and called me a selfish miser who only thought about their kids. Then she hung up on me. I tried calling back but she wouldn't take my calls. She sent me a wall of text about how I need to take a look around because other people have needs too, not just my kids. And one of these days, I need to start prioritizing my family, or I lose everyone. We warned her about this, but she wouldn't listen. And honestly, I cannot subpoena mine and my children's future to please my sister. Am I the a-hole for this? Update. Thanks to everyone who chipped in. I appreciate your comments. My sister's car was repossessed a few days ago, and frankly, I'm glad it was. She's keeping her distance from everyone since we refused to buy the car for her. But I know she would come around soon. She's a smart girl and I'm rooting for her to make the right choices at least this time. Not the a-hole OP. Your sister sounds selfish and entitled. She wants you to buy her a car as a wedding present and when you refuse, she got the car anyway. And she still planned for you to pay for the car. No one owes her a car or money for her. If it's a dream car, then she should be willing to buy it herself and not involve everyone else in it, especially when you all told her not to get it. Good on you for standing your ground. You're not selfish and really, your kids should be your top priority. You said she's a smart girl, so I'll take your word for it. Hopefully, she realizes how selfish she was being and she makes amends with you and your parents. Story 2. My nephew's 11 and this was a birthday gift for context. Basically, I got him a switch for his birthday, but I thought it would be funny to play a prank on him. So I took the switch out of the original box and put it at the bottom of a gift bag with a bunch of packs of socks on top to hide it. Then in the original switch box, I put a couple packs of underwear. On his birthday, I gave him the box first. 
and he opened it and it was just underwear. Then I gave him the gift bag, which had the socks and actual switch in it. My nephew took it in stride. Obviously, he looked really disappointed at first, but once he opened the bag and realized he actually was still getting a switch, he was super excited and thought it was funny. My sister is losing her mind though. She told me I'm a borderline sociopath, that it was a cruel joke to play on a child, etc. I don't see the big deal. My nephew wasn't upset and it's not like this was some big drawn out traumatic thing. The whole process of opening both gifts and getting the happy ending of an actual switch took maybe five minutes. So am I the a-hole for playing a shitty gift in a Nintendo Switch box type of prank on my nephew? I'm willing to consider that maybe I was in the wrong and get some input. You're not the a-hole OP. You bought your nephew a really nice gift. I'm sure you meant no harm. You just wanted to have a little bit of fun with him. I can understand why his mother has a problem with it though. I think she would have been right with all her comments if you had given him a different gift and put it in the Nintendo Switch box and never the Nintendo. But you didn't. I think all your nephew is feeling is joy and gratitude towards you right now. Now for some comments. You bought your nephew a Nintendo Switch for his birthday. Unless you're at least a millionaire, I'd say that automatically qualifies you as not an a-hole. I suspect you'll be the top of your nephew's not an a-hole list for life. You're not the a-hole. I personally don't think you're an a-hole for what you did. However, I can understand your sister's concerns. As a kid, I had things like this done to me many times and always found it comical. Had you built his hopes up and not followed through, that would make you an a-hole 100%. Your sister is just concerned with his emotional well-being. It is her kid and ultimately she has the choice in what she thinks is appropriate. Going forward from here, I would ask her before trying another prank. If she says so, respect her decision. It depends. If you have the kind of relationship with your nephew where you joke around like this, you are 100% not the a-hole. Also, I am your other nephew. I'll be waiting for my switch. If you don't have that kind of relationship and sort of decided out of the blue to prank him, then uh, maybe you're a slight a-hole. Not even that, because you still bought the kid a switch. More like, you may have seemed slightly a hole -ish to observers. I'm leaning towards the first, since it seems to have been taken in stride. What did she get for a gift? Is it possible she feels like you outshined her? Story 3 My co-worker and I work with kids, kind of like camp counselors, but we see different kids more often than the same. The other day there was this little 8-year-old girl. My co-worker thought she was being funny and gave the little girl a nickname she didn't like. It wasn't an offensive nickname, but still. The little girl called my co-worker ugly after she said it and my co-worker got kind of offended. The rest of the night, the little girl kind of picked on my co-worker a little bit, calling her ugly, saying her face looked like a foot, making fun of her for not having a boyfriend, etc. My co-worker didn't really show that it bothered her much, but she did occasionally make fun of the little girl back. I thought that this was kind of inappropriate and that it was silly for her to be offended over what an 8-year-old was saying. At the end of the shift, when most of the kids were gone, we were talking and the co-worker called the little girl mean and rude. I said that the little girl wasn't mean and that my co-worker was actually the one that was rude. She got upset and asked me what she had done that was rude and I kind of sensed that this would not end well and just said, you do lots of things that are rude. My coworker kept prodding me about it and I didn't really want to fight. At the very end of the shift when we were both leaving, she told me that I was actually the one being rude by not telling the little girl to stop insulting her after she had already told her to stop several times. I told her that it was just an 8-year-old girl and that she really shouldn't be offended over what a little kid thinks or says and that it was ridiculous for her to get mad. She said that I was the one being ridiculous because the little girl very clearly liked me and hated her and I was more concerned with being liked by the kids than disciplining them. So am I an a-hole for calling her rude? Now for some comments. An 8-year-old is old enough to know better. The kind of stuff that was said needed to be stopped. I have a 10-year-old and would be mortified to know he said any of those things to someone. All your co-worker did was give her a nickname, totally different levels. You are wrong in saying that the little girl didn't do anything wrong. She did, 
and adults should have stopped it. Because kids can be more honest with their insults, they can hurt a lot more. I think you were wrong in this one. I would say you're the a-hole. From your story, it seems like you didn't help intervene even after you saw how distressed your co-worker was becoming from it. On top of that, you essentially denied the validity of review of the situation and feelings about it. I think you could have soothed it over by wording yourself differently or including some sort of buffer so you didn't come off as harsh. Or said something that showed some empathy, perhaps not to the situation but at least towards your feelings. Not sure how the dynamic is at your workplace, but working with children, I think it's important to set them straight. When they are out of line, the child was. I understand her being upset about a nickname, but someone could have given guidance to show that holding a grudge over someone isn't good. I mean, you sound more concerned with being liked by the kid than disciplining them. Your co-worker seems entirely right there. Letting a kid get away with being mean to an adult when you're presumably responsible for them is just shitty overall. You're teaching bad habits. I feel like 90% of the population has been called a nickname we don't like when we are very young. And we've all been able to deal with it without being little twats. Also, I didn't want to fight. Yet, you do lots of things that are rude. Really? Don't play that passive-aggressive game. You absolutely want it, if not to fight, then to wound. After seeing your coworker getting made fun of all day, you decide to take it upon yourself to nobly inform her how it's all her fault anyway.